All right, I'm streaming now. Okay, um, this time I have the stream manager on, so I'm just gonna wait until I get at least one follower. I used to just kind of start, but um, this seems to be the strat. Oh, okay. No, y'all are here. Um, yeah, let's get started. Uh, so this is the PCB business card. I actually took these to open source. Um, I don't know if you saw on the uh, Slack, but William Osmond got to see one of these, which is pretty sick. Um, I'm just going to clone this design and retune the inductance uh, to give you some, to give you some um, context for how this works. Oh, you might have noticed that I have this like camera stream right here. Uh, so you can see the actual PCB on the right as I'm like going over the design. So the, the concept for this board is, uh, or this business card is that I, I get to show off like some modules that I've designed in the past. And all you have to do, like, like you get this physical card and you can see the real size of what these uh, modules look like. So right here is like um, an, an Arduino bare bones uh, module I made that you can just drag into your project and use. Uh, here's like a, a buck converter. Yeah, 13 volts to 3.3 volts output. And here's an LED matrix. So the idea is like you can come in. You If I handed you this card, all you have to do is go to the Flex public library and search for these uh, texts and just download them. There um, and and that that's all cool in theory, but there's a few problems with this design when I actually made it, which we'll go into uh, when designing the next one. Um, before that, I want to go over like the elephant in the room. What is this big coil and this NFC uh, or this QR code? So this QR code uh, takes you to this project itself because I thought that would be super meta. It's like here's the design. Here's like my business card. And then you can scan it to see how I designed the business card. I just think that's super cool. And um, I'm going to keep that for the next one. Whoa, my audio just. OK, now we're good. Uh, OK, so yeah, that's, um, that's what the QR code does. This big red coil here, that connects to the NFC um, here. I can actually, you're looking at it right now in the camera stream. This is the NFC IC. I guess I could just go over the circuitry right now. Uh, all this stuff off to the right, this is actually a LED circuit that lights up. I wonder if I, I think I might even be able to tap my phone right now as you're looking at it. Um, and you might be able to see the LED light up. Ah, uh, come on. Oh, oh yeah, do you see that? There you go. Um, and then here you can see that I got a link, uh, on my phone, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's what this here, this thing here does. It just, when you're harvesting the energy from the NFC field, uh, from your phone, um, this capacitor just kind of helps store that energy and then the current limiting resistor. Uh, you know, just limits the current to the LED. It's pretty basic. And then here is what I messed up on and need to retune. This is a 14.5 megahertz antenna. And, um, or it's an antenna that was tuned to 14.5 megahertz with this series uh, 15 uh, or 50 picofarad capacitor. I remember, yeah, 56 picofarads. So tuned together, they resonate at 14.5 megahertz. And the reason I did that, oh my God, why does my audio keep doing this? That's really annoying. Um, anyways, the reason that uh, I tuned it to 14.5 megahertz and not 13.78, which is the NFC standard, like if we go to, actually, let's just go to the, uh, Let's just go to this, the design to this part. Um, yeah, so here's a data sheet. 
it should be able to tell you um, some more information. Uh, anyways, but uh, the NFC standard defines the resonant frequency at 13.78 megahertz, or something like that. Isn't 13, whatever. And in the application note I was using to design this coil, it said to tune it to uh, to tune it to 14.5 megahertz so that you can increase the range uh, in which like it'll activate. I think that's complete garbage. Like they probably were testing it and was like, oh cool, you know, this antenna resonates. Um, the, the, the more we increase the inductance or the more we shift the resonant frequency, the like longer the range is. But that's not what happened with me. I tuned this how they uh, suggested, which they didn't do in their actual demonstration. Let me just pull up the docs. So that, um, so I can just show what I'm talking about here. So I was following this application note. It has a lot of great information. Application notes are awesome. Um, and then for the IC I was using, it tells you the internal capacitance of the IC. Uh, I also created another board to test this board, and it's coming in like literally today just not in time for the live stream. But uh, I, I bought a VNA and we're just gonna plug that into the board to see what the actual like uh, resonant frequency is. However, uh, you have to also uh, populate the IC when you do that because there is that internal capacitance to the, um, to the actual NFC IC. And there's all the parasitic capacitances and stuff that they go over. And here's like all the theory. Um, Square. So this was the um, coil design square. Yeah, this was what I used to find the frequency. I think I'm going to duplicate this. So let's just say this was like 14.5 megahertz. And then uh, duplicate. Let's do a new one that's 13. I, I just, I think it's 13.78, maybe it's 13.76. It doesn't matter. Um, we'll find, we'll find it. I think is, this isn't the only application note. Oh, 13.56, my bad. I was way off. Cause that's like a couple of kilohertz I'm off by, right? 13.56 uh, megahertz. So this paper goes over design. There's another application note that was better than this. Um, I'm going to look for that. I'm surprised I don't have it downloaded. Yeah, th this this paper is really cool. I just, like, if you're ever bored, you can read papers. And they're usually free, unlike books. No, I'm kidding. Books are great. Um, yeah, this, this goes over, like, really in-depth how you can design uh, this, this PCB antenna, how you can tune it, all the capacitance you have to worry about. It, like for RF people, like actual RF people, you, you have to simulate all the um, capacitances. But here, like they give you really good estimates of what kind of you can expect about for an uh, etched or printed PCB, uh, how you like uh, manufacture this antenna. You could, this, these are the parasitic capacitances that you can expect, which is pretty sick. Um, it's nice to give that to you. So let's see. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So here they provide their NXP, the the tool I was using, their spreadsheet. Um, I'm looking for. They had another application note that. Oh, this is cool. Classics antenna. That is super cool. Huh. And there's there's all these classes for these antennas, and literally the only thing that defines these class is their um, size constraint. And that's why this is technically like a custom antenna, because a square, I don't think any of the class the classes define a square of this diameter. I did like a 40 by 40 millimeter diameter. So it's really just like, there's so many ways you can implement this antenna and you just have to start constraining yourself somehow. 
I guess that's what they invented the classes for. It's like, oh, here you can start off uh, constraining yourself. Um, this might be the application note that I'm looking for. Um, nope. <laughs> you need a login for that. Nope. Oh, I don't want to go back and look for the application note that I, I followed. There was like this, um, there's this like slides, this PowerPoint, uh, this PowerPoint that I was following, which really explained it well. And then that's also what told me to tune this the wrong way. If I can't find it, then I'll just start designing things. Um, yeah, it's not here. What the heck? Maybe we could just Google it. NXP, NFC, coil, design, um, application note. No, this isn't the one. Um, there's so many. <laughs> Is it like application guide? It's in landscape format, so I know uh, application guide. There's so many of them. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, they have this online tool. That's even more useful. Cool. Please tell me you don't have to download it. FR4. Um, tag, oh, I think it was like one of these. Whoa, it just straight up gives you, um, oh, that's useless. Okay. Uh, is this the one? It's got to be the one. Nope. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna look one more time in the application note. I like. I feel like there's a better way to link application notes, you know, than just this. Um, here are the standards application notes. How to use FD pin field detection, data sheets. Um, there's just. Like the industry, um, I remember in school, they're telling us we have to like follow the standard, follow this format, but, uh, oh, is it, no, this is the paper. Yeah. But like, honestly, PowerPoints are the way to go. You just get the information out in a much more concise format. Okay, where are we at? Um, you know what? I don't think I find it, but that's okay. I'm going to redo the calculations here and then we can test it. Uh, did I not just open that? <laughs> okay. Let's open this up. Um, and yeah, let's just go through it. So... Here's a data sheet to the IC, which gives us, um, it should tell us their internal capacitance. They have like some internal ca capacitance in here so that we don't have to fully, wait, what happened? I duplicated the previous one. Um, oh, why is it cleared of? Oh, that's not good. It just deleted all my entries. That's uh, not cool. Um, kind of sucks this happening on stream, but somehow I just lost all my work. That's so lame. When I renamed this file, all my fields were gone. Okay, it doesn't matter. We We know what we're doing. <laughs> I guess we have to do this from scratch. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, so 
let me just restate what I'm doing right now. So this antenna, we can actually click on the part, was tuned for 14.5 um, 14 14 megahertz. But right now I want to tune it for 13.56. Um, and let's pull that up. Here. Okay, so what do we know? Let's just search up frequency. Also, it's really cool that they updated this July 21st, 2023. So this is a pretty recent part, literally one week ago. Um, carrier frequency, what is the carrier frequency? 13.56 megahertz. So that's what you should be <laughs> tuning it to, 13.56. And then, the chip capacitance, damn, I really wish I had, it didn't delete all my previous work because I had so much information there. You, I, I actually filmed some videos uh, of this sheet, so I'm gonna go pull that up <laughs> to get the numbers I, I used. Oh, here it is, yes. Yeah, so I put 50 picofarads for that. I literally filmed this video, um, I don't know if I can see this. I literally filmed this video like of my computer screen. Um, and when Apple deletes all your work, you can just go look back at that <laughs> to find all the numbers you see. So I used 50 there, and then I used uh, four picofarads for the connection. Uh, I got these numbers from their, um, from the application notes. So it's all there if I wanted to look for it again, but I was like, I already did all this work. Why am I doing it again? And then I put three picofarads for this. Um, because yeah, it's a printed board and they're saying this is like, you know, this is just an estimate. So it doesn't make that big of a difference anyways. Uh, the really, the main one is the chip capacitance, which it tells you right here. The input capacitance is 50 uh, picofarads, you know, between this threshold. Um, that's a pretty good range. I mean, that's 10%. It's just like slightly less than 10% tolerance. Um, and it's saying we need a parallel cap of 57 picofarads. So it doesn't look like the parameters have changed that much. Um, right here saying we need 57 picofarads. That's exactly what my previous design said. And then it's saying here we need a 2.4, a 2.4 microhenry inductor. I wonder if I stored, yeah, this is a 2.1 microhenry inductor. So I think what I'm gonna do, um, let me just show you this other board I made. Uh, NFC. Antenna measurement. So this is a, a board I made to actually measure it, which is, like I said, is coming in today. And, oh no, it ripped up all my traces. Okay, those traces used to be there. But anyways, um, how, so this, I here's a SMA connector. Um, I'm trying to like think about how I phrase this. You just plug in the VNA to the uh, SMA, you, pl you plug in your VNA to this SMA connector, and then you'll get a plot, a frequency plot of where the circuit starts to resonate. And that's what I'm looking for. My theory is that this actually resonates around 14.5 megahertz, but I wish I could confirm that. Um, I think I'll do that tomorrow. But in the meantime, in parallel, I know I could just design this kind of like the proper way. And then what I was going to do is just design it for 13.56 megahertz or actually make my inductance 2.41 microhenries, and then I can go and play with the tuning cap. So instead of like just playing with the tuning cap on the version one, I figured I might as well fix a few other things. Like the fonts were super, super tiny. Oh wait, yeah, let's actually create the, a to-do list. So let's fork this or clone it, I guess. Um, 
And then, uh, so the things I wanted to change, the font sizes were absolutely minuscule. So it's like super hard to see. Um, it would be cool if I can remove the solder mask on the NFC coil. So it's more obvious. Um, and then, and then, yeah, just put something on the back because the back is just kind of boring. So let's changes like change history. Uh, we want tuned 2.4 micro Henry inductor, or let's just say 13.56 tuning. Um, we also want larger font. That's another thing about uh, designing PCBs is you should, it's kind of good to own a real printer because then you could print what it looks like in real life. And then before you send it off to a fab house, it's like, oh, all my font is like unreadable because it's super tiny. But I obviously don't do that and I don't own a real printer. So um, I guess we have to make more board revisions. At this point though, I think like for every board revision where things are too small, it's like $40 per revision. I could just buy a printer with that. I should just go buy a printer anyways. Um, okay, so the font was too small. The NFC coils in tune properly. Put some stuff on the back, make it spicier. Put some stuff on the back. And it's like the first thing that people do when you give them the sport. They're like, they're like, oh, what's on the back? <laughs> I was like, why don't you look at what's on the front? There's like all the stuff on the front. But I, th I guess it's like instinctual. Usually there's there's like a little secret in the back, you know. Um, Okay, so, yeah, here we have, and let's just call this V2, PC business card V2. All I have to do is create a whole new um, antenna, which is honestly a pain in the butt. Like, <laughs> this is not trivial to make. Uh, let's try it again. Hmm. How did I do this the first time? I feel like this was such a pain in the butt. You have to manually go in and like specify all the locations of everything. Um, let, okay, now, now we're on track. So now we know what we're doing. We have 40 by 40 millimeter square. Let's enter that, those dimensions into this sheet. Can I zoom in? It's so zoomed out. Oh. Oh, it's because, oh, it's because I saved it as like a numbers file. Oh, then screw this. Wait, yeah. But okay, before I delete it, let me open the previous one. Um, 13.56. I forgot it was in my documents. That's so annoying. Oh, here you go. That's so confusing. That's kind of on me. Uh, okay, let me, let me delete this then. And just duplicate this. Okay, so here's the calculator tool. Um, yeah, resonance is like, it's a cool concept. It takes a, it, it's like a lot to wrap your head around sometimes. 13.56. Uh, Let me just go confirm that in the data sheet because I'm losing my mind here. Um, Thirteen point five six. If I got that right, that should come up. Yeah. Okay. So that's correct. Um, yeah, we're targeting two point four microhenry. So this, these are all the parameters I used in my previous one. I wanted 
40 by 40, um, number of turns. This is really hard to read, but here, matrix one. This was 2.1 microarrays. This was 2.5, meaning this, uh, these parameters are much closer. If I had 800 mils micrometers between the tracks, um, I get much closer to uh, a 2.4 microarray inductance. Uh, yeah, yeah, so let me summarize this a little bit better. We have 2.41 microhenries as our target, and right now we're just kind of going over the, we're, we're just putting in a bunch of random numbers and seeing where we get, and then you just kind of iterate on that. So in your second run, you change one parameter, and you'll see if your inductance goes up or down, which will tell you the difference. Um, and then now you know like which direction you're going to go, so then you choose another parameter to tune, right? Uh, Exactly. So that's what I was going to do here. We're at 2.1, 2.5. I think for calculation four, I'm going to try to mimic matrix uh, or this result. However, you have to think about how feasible it is to do things. And I don't think I thought all the way through um, when I made this coil and I got really lucky because these bends, like I was just picked a random number for these bends and look at that. Like, I think I could fit one more coil and then that's it. Um, so over here we have, I wonder if I just did 40, and a lot of this is trial and error too. So 40 by 40 square, let's say we keep the 300. I do want to, do six. Let's just see what happens. Um, so right here at, we're at two point eight. Okay, so that's that's a lot. I think. What if we went down four 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 turns? Less turns, easier to implement. Um, no, that's not good. <laughs> one point one point four eight by that much, but one turn. Like I guess the turns makes a huge difference on the inductance. Uh, looks like we have to play with the trace spacing. Let's do 700. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. What if we do 200? I don't even think manufacturers support 200. No, it's not great. 1,000. Let's go. 1.87. No, we want to go higher, 800. It's so weird how this works. <laughs> okay, whoa. Aren't these identical parameters? Oh, it's because I have five turns. Okay, so we have to increase the capacitance somehow. Okay, let's go back to six turns. Six, turn, six turns is gonna suck. Um, if I do 900, yeah, we're getting close. I'm pretty sure if I did like 950 or so, I would, I would have, you know, we're getting really close or 1000. That's a whole, that's, that's like really wide spacing. 2.43. That's like pretty on, on par. Let's see what this does. Um, trace with, let's do 400. Does that increase or decrease? So that decreases our capacitance. I think with, a wider trace width, we can get away with a tighter gap. Um, and this makes it more manufacturable, which is kind of a plus. So 800, I think we decrease it too much. Oh, wait, no. What? Oh, I guess that's why we have this whole matrix to begin with, so I don't have to do things like this. Oh, that, that keeps decreasing it. Okay, let's go to 500 micrometers. Yep, it's really just like trial and error here. Um, 2.51, so it's a little too much. Let's do 600. 2.45, so it looks like there's a sweet spot between those two numbers, so 550. Um, 2.48, let's go 560. 2.47, was it like 580 maybe? 2.46. No, we're definitely in like the 620, 2.44, 2 
Okay, let's see if we could bump this up. Four, 420, we have to do 420, let's go. 2.41, let's go, it, that, that was it, it was 420. Um, that's what got us there, 2.416, 2.1, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I don't know why it's like this. I, I, I mean, here it tells me my 10% uh, different. So just enter that in 420, 620, and six. Six, six turns is a lot of turns because um, th this one is five turns. So actually, this is going to be a really big coil. Like the bends are going to be pretty fat, uh, which I'm not a fan of. But let's see, we're at 1.17 e to the negative 2 difference, which is pretty good. 2.1, 2.41. Yeah, so these, these are the parameters we ended up with. I think there was like, actually, like, I don't really know how to use this properly. I think you're supposed to finish this, but we can go confirm these numbers uh, in a different, like a separate calculator, kind of just to get a separate opinion. Let's go like NFC um coil calculator coil tune um i know yeah stm32 has one of these oh here it is uh it's like the e-suite design nfc inductance calculator something like that Um, okay, so let's go back to our geometry. We have six turns. Oh, one sec. Let me just check. So here we have six turns, antenna length 40. I'm assuming that's the outer length. Um, the, what were the conductor, conductor numbers? The width was 420 by 620. 420 and 0 0.6. Was it 0 0.62? Yes. And then we had six turns thickness. I think that, yeah, 35 micrometers, the substrate thickness. That was the assumption here. 35 micrometers, I, and I think 35 micrometers corresponds to one ounce per square foot. And yeah, I think we wanted a four, like one millimeter board. I don't know the electric permittivity that they were using in this one. Let's see if they include it. Oh yeah, their permittivity here was 3.14. That, that's another thing, I have to get the actual permittivity figures so here we're saying 2.5 microhenries at 13.56 megahertz. Um, because we can get these made from PCB way, we can actually get PCB way capabilities. I think, um, or stack up two layer. I think this is why, uh, this is why it it matters. Like uh, hardware is hardware is hard because you have to like think about so many things all at once. You know, like here I'm I'm like worrying about the calculations in the sheet, and then I'm like, okay, let's go to the manufacturer and let's go to the board. What's possible to do in your design tool? What's possible to do by your manufacturer? It's, it's like. It's a lot. They don't tell you the dielectric of their two layer, which is really annoying, unless they do. Let's see. No, they only tell you for, your, for their four layer. Oh, come on. What's the dielectric constant? Um, what? <laughs> their website is so old and weird. <laughs> uh, 
let's see if let's just Google it. What is the dielectric constant of PCV way FR4? The dielectric constant ranges from 4.2 to 4.8. This isn't helpful. Okay. So it's just kind of an estimate. They they just don't guarantee. Um, they just don't guarantee what it is. Hmm. I think, yeah, they don't tell you their dielectric constants for two layer boards, maybe because they don't want to guarantee it. Um, what was the assumption here? 3.14, 4.2 to 4.8. I'm just thinking like, how have I never had to run into this? I feel like I needed to know their, uh... oh, here, here, advanced PC material list. Black core. Um, so their PCB prototype um, for areas less than one meter squared. I guess they don't tell you which uh, which FR4 you got manufactured with, right? But when when getting a quote, so if you go two layers FR4 model. Material model can be remarked below. HD high density is available for four layers or more. I say TG one fifty to one sixty, PCB way TG one fifty to one sixty dielectric constant. Ah. Oh here. Nope. <laughs> Those aren't. Oh, 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 okay. So the 150 to 160. Oh, that's not even listed uh, because this is the high TG. What are the low TG materials? So th they link the, um, the TG material to the actual material, which then you can go like look for. Like if you go here, this should tell you the coefficient um, permittivity. Nope. I guess I'll just manually kind of look through it. Oh. No, that's something else. It's funny because these numbers are on the range for like the dielectric constant. Oh, yeah, that's what I was looking for, the dielectric constant. Dielectric constant. Nope. <laughs> They're just not going to tell it to you? Come on, man. Um, yeah, it, it's really funny because this is totally within the range. 4.2 looks legit. You know, this is all kind of estimated anyways. Um, and I think when you get the real board, you actually have to test. Um, you have to like tune it with the capacitance. Wow. So I, I guess it's good to have like two coils, you know, available so then we could tune both of them. This is not trivial. I think like tuning, tuning uh, resonant stuff, resonant circuits is just not fun. You have to like, especially if you have RLC, like two, I, I, I used to, um, there's like this classy amp we had to tune, which was such a pain in the butt because you had six parameters that you could tune and you're just like i guess that tuning this one makes it work better and then you have to test it across the whole frequency range and when you don't have like a proper setup with like an automatic frequency range sweep thing you're like manually changing the frequency of your like your driving circuit and then measuring the output it's like it's horrible <laughs> um Okay, okay, okay. Quick turn. Oh, that's funny. So they, they actually tell you which one they use, the quick turn standard PCB material list. Um, general TG FR4, medium TG FR4, high TG FR4. I think we're using the general, 
But the thing is, of all these materials they use, none of these actually tell you the dielectric constant, which is so annoying. I guess, I guess it, um, it depends on more stuff. If anyone in the comments knows like how to find out the uh, dielectric constant of these dielectric, is this solder mask? UV blocking. Dielectric breakdown, dielectric constant, one megahertz, less than 5.4, typical value 4.6. Okay, so we're looking at 4.6-ish in the one megahertz range. Um, that's nice. They actually tell you. Uh, and then let's look at this one. So we could get any of these, like, oh my god. Dielectric constant 4.3. So we're looking at 4.6, 4.3, um, and let's look at this one. You know, I'm going to take the average of those. Damn it. Oh, it doesn't tell you. So 4.6 and 4.3, let's go like 4.5, medium TG. Um, let's look at this one because let's see what the dielectric constant is. Uh, permittivity, loss tangent, one gigahertz, 4.5. Yeah, so we're looking at like 4.5 ish. Um, okay, let's let's put that into our the relative permittivity. Yeah, it was saying 4.6. So I actually kind of trust the uh, ST25 calculator a little bit better. So 2.59, we want to bring that down to 2.4. So let's see if we can do anything about that. 2.0.6. Oh, that br brings it up. What if we can decrease our turns back to five? So we're at 2.0. Yeah, and then 0 0.3, 0 0.3. This was our previous coil. Right. Oh, we are at 2.56. That's interesting. Okay. 0 0.42, 0 0.39, 0 0.4, 2 0.42, 0 0.41. 2.41 micronews. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's put that back into this calculator. We had the wrong permittivity this whole time. So let's go like 4.5, 4.5. Oh no, what happened? Is it, is this like linked? Why is number so bad? Is this like linked to something? Why can't I, what the hell? Um, why can't I see what's in this cell? Is, this is what's in cell, pi. It, oh, it's pi. <laughs> this is literally like pi. Okay, where where is the dielectric constant? I, I'm so stupid, 3.1415. Oh my God, okay. Uh, design constant one, average coil area. Does Is this independent of the dielectric constant? No way. I mean, the SD calculator says that it's obviously not. Um, permittivity, der Luft. I think this, like, this calculator kind of assumes a few things. They, like, calculate that the dielectric constant for you. Well, we know that it's about 0 0.41. We know this, we know this gets us our uh, 2.41 microhenries at the frequency we want. I say we just go for this. It's, and then we don't have to modify it that much. It makes our life easier. We're still at five turns, 40 by 40. We just have to increase the spacing of our coil from 0 0.3 uh, millimeters to 0 0.41, which is kind of annoying. Um, and then if we change this to like 4.4, oh, that doesn't make a difference. Yeah, just kind of like play around. 
So 4.3 doesn't make a difference. 4.6. Yeah. I guess the the permittivity doesn't make a big difference, huh? Let's say 3.1. No, it does. <laughs> if, if it changes by that much. Say 4. Oh, it just wasn't updating. 4.2. 0.234.4. So given what we know, we're likely to get um, a relative permittivity of about 4.4-ish. 4 uh, 4.4, 4.5, 4.6. And then, yeah, I think we just need more spacing. Kind of a pain in the butt, but let's do it. I will show you how I did that. Um, so let's clone this part or yeah, clone. And let's call this 40 millimeter square 13.56. Um, antenna and say 2.41 microhenry target. Okay, 2.41 microhenry is targeted at 13.56 megahertz. Um, and then let's say link to the e design. Uh, play it around in the STM, the ST coil calculator. Okay, so 40 by 40, 30 millimeter trace width, and then let's say for spacing, um, we had 410 micrometer spacing, uh, dielectric constant of let's say 4.5, it kind of doesn't make a difference. And then we have five turns. Um, results. Yeah, so our only assumption was this. Uh, also thickness. So our assumption, we had a dielectric constant of 4.5. We had a trace thickness of 3.5 or 35 micrometers, which is uh, on par. 35 micrometers is like one ounce. So let's just put one ounce per square foot. Um, there's so many parameters here, but thank God that <laughs> there's like kind of the standardized uh, this very popular PCB manufacturing like technique. Honestly, yeah, less choices is better because if it was like, you can do anything you wanted and we're gonna charge you the exact same, it, this would just be crazy. But here it's like, oh no, th uh, one ounce is cheaper. So we're doing one ounce, like no arguing with that. Um, anyways, let's see what we're up with. <laughs> I think we have to decrease the, uh, now that we have like a baseline, this should this should be easier to do. I think this was a lot of manual calculations. So let's figure this out. We have 20 here, that makes sense. And negative 17.6. Um, that's with the 0 0.3, we have five. So 20 minus 0 0.3 <laughs> times six or five turns, sorry, my bad. So 18.5, why is that? 0 0.3 times 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, okay, so my math isn't correct here. Um, obviously, we have... Oh, my God, the thick, <laughs> the thickness to get here. What We have 1, 2, 3, 4. And the pitch between these is their thickness plus the spacing 
which is 600 micrometers. So we have 20 minus 5 times 0 0.6, which is 17.6. 17. Is it 6? 4? So apparently it's 4 because we have 4. There's a track. So we have 4 traces in between. And their pitch is the trace width plus the um, trace spacing, meaning that this one, if we were to use that equation, is 0. Point, so 20 minus 0, 0. 0. 0.41 plus 0. 0.3 is 0. 0.71 times 4, meaning this one needs to be at 17.16 millimeters. Okay, not bad. Oh, no. Whoa, what happened? What happened? Okay. I think we're going to have to shrink them because if it's this far, um, and then I might as well just like delete these and redo those in the future. Um, yeah, what happened to you? Okay. So P1 and P2. Uh, this one's 7.6. Let's try this. Um, 17.16. Is that correct? Feels too convenient. You know what I mean? Like I could just add a one here. Uh, 17.16. You know? Whoa, <laughs> what the hell? Oh, because we're dealing with a... Oh, this one's also curved. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Uh, negative 17.16. What the hell? No, this one's straight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Horizontally, we have to do things a little different. 17.16, 17.16. Did that do this right? It looks kind of bent, but I know it's not. Okay. You know, I guess you could connect those directly like this. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. Would it? No, that, I mean, that's like totally legal. Nothing's stopping me from doing that. And then just to make sure the trace widths are all 300 micrometers. Um, no, this trace width is 10 mils. Oh no, 300 micrometers. 300 micrometers. Oh, I think because it inherits it from this trace width, which is 300 micrometers. Okay, chillin'. Um, oh, that's good news. We don't have to change our wires in any way, like our, our lengths, because that would be a pain in the ass. Luckily, we can just do this. And then let's move this boy. 17.16, 17.16. Delete this boy. Um, so yeah, right now I'm just guaranteeing my, uh, I'm just making sure I get that uh, 4.1, 4.1, um, 410 micrometer spacing. So let's delete all those. I mean, I guess I didn't have to delete this one. That was okay. You're legal. Th this optical illusion, this doesn't feel like a 45 degree angle, you know, at all, even though geometrically it is. Um, let's move this guy over. I wanna move all these over so they're spaced evenly. Um, and then it doesn't feel as illegal. Okay, let's do times three, 17.87, 17.87. Sweet, and then times two, 18.58, no, 18.58. And then times one, 19.29. Um, 19.29. So if we, they, I mean, they look evenly spaced, but we can confirm by measuring. Just hit M. Oh no, it's not where my cursor is. Okay, here, let me reload the page because 
it's not where my cursor is. Um, let's just confirm that we're actually at 0 0.41 millimeter spacing. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay, so we're at, what the hell? Ah, uh, I got it. So lucky. Uh, it's saying it's like 0 0.47. 0 point, that's not right. Okay, let's do the math here. If this trace width is 300 micrometers, I, I might have done the math completely wrong. Um, so <laughs> if the trace width is 300 micrometers, let's say from these two, this is 19.29, 20. So 20 plus 150 gets us here. Let's do 20 minus 150 or 0 0.15 minus 0 0.41 should get us to 19.44. And then minus another 0 0.15 gets us to 19.29. And this should be 19.29. I mean, math checks out. <laughs> so yeah, looks legit to me. Let's just do the same for the rest of them. Um, it, it looks good too. So not, not complaining here on looks. And before I forget, let's delete all these traces. Well, not that one. Let's delete this boy. Sweet. Um, and all we have to do now is, okay, I guess that we could delete these ones too, because those are weird. Um, I guess I'll delete all the corner traces except for the last ones while we're at it. Oh, this is so much easier than I thought. Like making this in the first place was <laughs> way harder. Uh, Okay, so we move these ones into place. Let's move the, the vertical ones are easier to tackle. So let's move, start with this one. What was it? 17.87. So 17.87. And then this one is 18.58. Um, 18.58. Some of these are just too convenient. You just add one integer. I wonder like what the mathematics is behind that. I, I used to do these math problems that were like really weird because they don't behave the way you're used to numbers behaving arithmetically. It's like, oh, how do you accomplish this problem that like, how do you set this up so that the integers like repeat or the number, the digits repeat? I was like, what? That's crazy. No, you can do that. Okay, 18.58. So now we're on the last one which was 19.29, 19.29. Oh, and then we have a little nub here to move that. I think these are ready to get connected at least on this front. Oh, oh, oh we haven't moved the vertical ones yet. My bad. Um, what was that position? 17.87, so 17.87. 87, 17.87. Uh oh, what did I do? Oh. Oh. This is the one, so it's 17.87. The vertical. The vertical, okay, 17.87. That checks. Um, let me just double check 17.87, 17.87. Okay. And then the next one was 18.58, 18.58. Yeah. This one you could just insert one integer, one digit. Seems legit. Delete these little stubs these little single traces that kind of came up. I think last time routing them was really weird. Okay, last one is 17 or 19.29. Oh, what is that? Sweet. 
I guess because like floating point numbers aren't actually numbers, so. And then I guess to confirm, what you can do is look at this trace, and as long as these numbers are the same, yeah, those look the same to me. I mean, then that means it's like a 45 degree line, and I didn't mess things up. So 0 0.59, 0 0.593, and the same should happen here. 0 0.795, 0 0.7, yeah. So these are 45 degree angles. These will be 45 degree angles. Um, and now we have a larger antenna, which should resonate at uh, with a 50 picofarad capacitor in series with another 50 picofarad ca parasitic capacitance to resonate at 13.56 megahertz. So this time around, I was a lot more diligent. I think the first time you do things, you're just kind of like sloppy because you kind of have to get it done. But then, you know, you can always come back for the second time and um, clean things up, recheck your assumptions. Last time I didn't make the, I didn't account for the dielectric constant in my assumptions. Um, and this time I did, so I'm a lot more confident in this coil. And yeah, just to clarify, I don't know if you could see my, uh, the cam here, right underneath my face, but this coil, um, this coil just, you have to put your phone like super, super close and it's really finicky. It's like, it's not easy to get your phone, you know, just right. Another thing could be the shape, you know, like, I think the shape might make it, I don't know, I, I really don't know much about the physics behind this. You know, I'm just an application engineer. Well, no, I'm not an application engineer. I'm a, because they are the ones who make the resources that we use to make things. But, um, you know, I'm putting this together and I'm like, I don't actually understand if I make like this really big coil and the other coil is like smaller. Cause I'm assuming the NFC coil on your phone as a reader coil, it's like, it can't be that big. You know, your phone is already really small. Um, also, I noticed that the more I played with it, the spot that likes to be sensed is like right where the camera bump is on the iPhone. So for the iPhone, the coil seems to be like up in this area. And I'm sure you could find this like on iFixit, like they'll tear down the phone and you can know that. But then for Android phones, like the coils are usually kind of near the center where the charging coil is. So I'm kind of curious why those don't interfere, you know? Um, who knows? I mean, someone out there does. Uh, so this is 17.87 on the vertical, negative 17.87. Whoa, that is weird. Oh, there's 17.87. Why does that end in such a weird spot? It feels inconsistent um, with where this one ends, which is 17.1 on the X. That's strange. But then this should be, I mean, this forms a perfect 17.81. 17.1. Oh, it's because I drew this trace from left to right. That makes sense. Okay. And we'll see what we can do to ameliorate that. <laughs> um, okay. Where are we at? Two, three. 17.1. Eighteen, eighteen point five eight. Okay, eighteen point five eight. Eighteen point five eight. Eighteen point five eight. Delete this thing, and then just double check. Yep, that is square. And we're on our last trace. And then we can figure out like routing the coil back to this, which I'm sure adds like its own parasitic uh, capacitances and inductances or whatever. Um, what are we at here? 19.29. 19.29. Yeah, this is the sus one. Not a, not a float. Or, I mean, it is a float, not an integer. 
Whoa, how did this get messed up? Oh, this part confuses me. Um, <laughs> we're at the terminal case. Okay, 19 point... 19.29 this one's at 19.29 and then this is a whole different thing um i forgot how i did this the first time <laughs> how did i do this the first time because this is 20 by 20. um oh i just did this it automatically creates a 45 degree angle for me how convenient. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, I have to do the math and like reconnect them. Nah, look at this. Oh, so easy. Wait, I have to look at my old coil. How did I terminate them? So the last one, oh, I connected them all wrong. That's so funny. Okay. So that that goes down. So this one should never have gotten connected. Let's undo that. Let's let's just undo it all. Um, this connects to what? I'm so confused. What? What did? What? How did I do this? What the hell? <laughs> I like confused myself. How did I accomplish this? It's so mesmerizing, like like the way this terminates here. And then do these ones have to align? These have to be staggered. No, that's minus 20. I'm so mind blown by my own accomplishment. Okay, I think if I did this, yes, this, this is the way. Oh no, but now I can't connect this to this without this. I can't connect this one without making it shorter. So I guess I have to do that. Um, shape start, zero. <sighs> shape end, 17.1. Oh, so this one, I just have to make like, not that. Uh, let's make it the height of this one, which is shape end is negative 16.6 yeah let's just copy that negative 16.6 and then i should be able to connect this and this one we can shorten as well um let's just do negative 16. yeah that's perfect okay that's how i did it <laughs> that's funny except this looks so ugly what did i do Oh, because I changed this, then these ones don't match nicely anymore. Hmm. Maybe I should, I should stagger them. Oh, how did, how does it not look bad here? Oh, it does. Okay. I see. Something has to look bad. You know, I don't know enough about antenna theory to, know which if i should like move this one up or down um what is the verdict hmm. I, I like want to space these more evenly um which i guess i could do but that, that would take a lot of brain intensive, um, that would take a lot of brain intensive basic mathematics. Uh, Mr. Tinfrog, hello, are you building this curl for as you ass or is the title wrong? Yes, my bad. Um, I need to figure out how to change the, ti the, the uh, titles on my Twitch streams because I haven't built the Raspberry Pi NAS in like four streams. So yeah, sorry, my bad, I'm gonna go change that. This coil is for this business card that I created. Um, I'll go over the summary once more because it's good to kind of like wrap my head around what I'm doing. Uh, I actually have, let me, if you look at, the, um, if you look at this like moving green thing underneath my face on the top right, this is the first revision under a microscope. 
so I can go over like all the little components. And I can actually bring it up to the camera so you can see what the first revision looks like. Um, and that's what this coil I'm, I'm building this is for. What This is the coil I'm building. Stream title set in the stream manager account creator dashboard. Oh, OK. I'll do that after this. Thank you. Um, creator dashboard. Honestly, the Twitch UI is not super intuitive, but that's helpful. There's like the creator dashboard and then the stream manager. And yeah, and just <laughs> I need to get up to date with it. Uh, so there's that. It's like all these modules that I've created. Um, and then down here is the uh, NFC uh, IC. And I think if I tap my phone on it, you should be able to see the LED light up. Yeah, I can see it lighting up. Here, let's do another live demo. Um, so I don't know if you can see that LED, but it should light up as I like scan this. Is it lighting up? It's really hard to see. Here, let me do it under the microscope. So if you pay attention to the microscope, there are the LEDs. And then let me tap my phone to it. Oh, my phone has to be on. Oh, yeah, do you see that? Crap. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, and then I got the, uh, at the website on my phone. Um, so this NFC IC contains a link to my portfolio. And the, the idea is like you can, you know, tap, you know, tap onto this business card and then uh, see my portfolio. The problem is, as you can tell, that demo is kind of hard to do, that I had to like get my phone in the right position. And the I think the problem was that I tuned this antenna to 14.5 megahertz in the previous uh, uh, revision. But what I should have done, so I tuned it to like 2.1 microhenries, is I should have targeted uh, a 13.56 megahertz tuning, which is the actual frequency spec of um, what's it called of, of NFC. So now I'm just thinking like, should I just visually move this? I guess like you can't argue with your brain, right? But then that messes up the spacing. Technically, this has the correct spacing. But then if I just do that, yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal. OK, such a tiny end. Um, eh, that looks good. Kind of. I want to make it smaller. Like, it's so hard to tell. What is this? What is this length? As long as it's less than 0 0.3, which it kind of isn't. OK, we'll, we'll just stick with that, whatever. And then, so this time I'm tuning it to 13.56 megahertz. Um, the resonant circuit here is formed between this the inductance of this loop and the, um, the parasitic capacitance as well as the capacitance inside the NFC IC, which uh, is under the microscope. This uh, IC has a capacitance of 50 picofarads. But let me see, uh, is there a way to tune the antenna without remanufacturing the board? Yes, there is, uh, Mr. Tenfrog. In fact, uh, let, me, let me think about this. So there 100% is a way to do so, which is to increase or decrease the parallel capacitance. So right here, you have 50 picofarads of parallel capacitance in this IC. And to get 14.5 megahertz, um, you put a 50 picofarad uh, capacitance in parallel to add on to that to get 100. And if you redo the math um, at 13.5 megahertz, the capacitance you need here with the 2.4 microhenry inductance would be different. So all I have to do is like 1 over, I guess I could do that right now, and then I could calculate what frequency I need. Um, I could just calculate the correct resonant capacitor to put in here. I thought that math was hard, but now I think about it, that math isn't that hard to do. <laughs> it's like, OK, it's literally 1 over 2 pi f r c or whatever. But I wanted to make another revision anyway. So I was like, I kind of wanted to just do this kind of correctly you know, this time. 
um, and take into account more things. But you know what? That might have been a better idea to just do the calculations. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if we could do it. Um, so you know, I don't even want to do it. So oh, at Copilot, what is the resonant frequency? What capacitor do I need to create a resonant circuit at 13.56 megahertz if my inductance is what 2.41 2.2.11 microhenries um, and then we could back calculate oh no copilot is down that sucks. Okay, whatever. Uh, one LC resonance calculator. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, Copilot being down is always a bummer. 13.56 because now I have to use online web calculators. Look how horrible this is. Um, Mr. Tenfrog, I, I know you know, it's funny you mentioned that because I thought the same thing and I was like, no, this is too hard. But now that I'm doing it, I'm like, this is way easier than redrawing an antenna. Uh, but, you know, sun cost fallacy, I already did this. Two point, so we're at 2400, 2110. 20, 20, and then let's just guess, like, wait, what? Oh, it rounded my, my frequency to 13.6. So it's saying I need a 65.3 picofarad capacitance. So in theory, um, all right, it's too late for me to have to go. Oh, okay. See ya, Mr. Tenfrog. Thank you for joining. Um, and thank you for solving, like, <laughs> solving this. In theory, all I have to do is go out to the store, buy a 63 picofarad capacitor, replace this one, um, and then the... Resonant frequency should be, we should be right at uh, uh, our target. Except that's not true because the total capacitance we need is 65.3. And we already have 50 from this, a few like six or seven picofarads from the, uh, six or seven picofarads from like the parasitic capacitances. So in theory, I should just be able to remove this capacitor and it should resonate closer to 13.5. Um, you know, sunk cost fallacy. Let's just, let's just finish this antenna. We're so close. I feel like I'm like, oh, don't fall for like the sunk cost, you know, like if, if you don't have to, but I have to <laughs> in this case, I'm so close. I'm so close. Um, okay. So if I kind of keep things equal, um, I, I'm going to place a via. Actually, let's connect this one to this one. I'm going to place a via here just for funsies. Uh, well, no, not for funsies, so that we can balance out the inductance. Um, so by placing a via there, that's where I'm going to pop out my via here. I hope those aren't too close together. Okay, and then what I accomplished was that was like, so we have to check the clearances here. I think we're good. Balls. Now this, the measurement tool isn't aligned. Um, 0 0.35. Um, yeah, I, I think we're good in terms of clearance, but kind of by mimicking this, uh, this via here, we can hopefully, I, I mean, the signal does have to travel through another layer, so it doesn't help there, but yeah, that's the best we can do. Yeah, and I think, 
we're done. <laughs> so I think it's worth sinking the cost into this in the last five seconds. So let's publish this. Um, and let's use it in our new design. Hopefully this is a better calculated antenna. Uh, this is our, 40, our 14 megahertz one. And then here, all we have to do is delete this component. Come on. Yeah. What is this? Where did this come from? There's just random traces on my board. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, okay. Oh, they like got ripped up from this thing. That's so weird. Because, okay, no, we deleted that antenna. So LA and LB, this, these are remnants from a different design. So let's just delete this all together. Put in my new 13.56 megahertz antenna. Sweet. Did not bother with an image for this. And And then, and then the rest is like cosmetic. I have to change the fonts and everything. That looks so much prettier. Okay. Uh, and then I have to regenerate the QR codes because this QR code links to the old project. And yeah, actually generating QR codes is kind of a process. It's a lengthy process. I'm gonna have to go do that again. But look at that. Wait, first let's get rid of this trace. What the heck is this Ugh. get out of here get out of here where does this come from oh these are just random parts of the ground it's so weird i don't even know how this appeared okay and then there's all these traces i have no idea where these came from they kind of look like they're from the uh the sub layout or the module, which is weird. How did they escape? They've jailbroken themselves. Oh, whoops, I deleted a line trace. Yep, I don't wanna do that. Yeah, I, I guess I could delete all these traces. I don't know what they're doing here. Okay, now we're good. We're golden. We could move this antenna back into place. Um, I kind of don't even have to shrink the QR code that much. Your whole antenna got moved. Yeah, we got to file some bugs after this. I know I'm catching so many bugs. Um, I have to go back to the stream recording and then watch how those traces got there. Um, that's weird and wrong. <laughs> and And then another thing I have to file is that this text doesn't show up uh, the same way. Like, so you can, can you see how they're all aligned on my screen? Um, what Gerber exports, export literally just the text object, and then the manufacturer picks what text they wanna do. So I wonder if there's a way to change this back into like silk, because look at that, the 2023 isn't aligned with the engineer, and that's so annoying. It, it's also not as bold. Um, Uh, I think, so I think the, man, yeah, the manufacturer just goes with their default font, which is kind of busted. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's funny that you're saying this, Brooks, because <laughs> that, that's like annoying, but this is the kind of stuff that I'm just used to. I didn't even bother filing this because I was just like, oh, whatever. Like, that's just the shit that happens and like, I'm okay with it. <laughs> so we need to, uh, we, 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 I'm going to go file that after this. Um, let's see where we at. Yeah, we shouldn't be okay with this. I, I think if you, it, w during export, if we like, if this was rebaked as, it got like rendered as an actual like image object, then the manufacturer wouldn't be able to do so. Um, that would kind of save, change things a bit. Uh, first of all, let me, oh, did I not have to change the scale of this at all? That's weird. 
I thought the scale was modified in the previous example, in the previous project. Um, let's go 0 0.98, oops, maybe like 0 0.95. Why is that not changing? Oh, well, I will, oh, it's because I, I have the container selected. That explains it. And I don't think scale is inherited. So I could just go and delete that or disable it. Um, say like just one, two, there you go. Perfect. Uh, I have to regenerate a new QR code. I can show you how that is done, but I can't remember <laughs> exactly. So Adobe QR code generator. And it would be cool too if I could link like, if I had multiple QR codes, like how to actually tune the antenna inductance. Although this is really meta, I think that would be a cool educational use case, you know? Uh, but no, let's do it. Let's link my uh, project. Ooh, that is dense. I think what I did was um, I didn't link it to the PCB. I just linked it to the actual project like this. Just to double check. Yep. And I think I could even remove the www, which saves us some space. I could even remove the HTTPS, which actually, I don't know. I think most, most things assume that, but let's leave it in. Um, and that brings us to the schematic. Uh, anyways, maybe I should link it to the PCB. Never mind. I take it back. I'm going to link it to the, the PCB editor because I want you to be able to see the card. I think it's just so much more wow and it's worth it. Okay, sweet. Oh, but it takes a while to load. Yeah, it might be a little slow. Hmm. I think it's worth it. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to keep it. Um, oh, we need an SVG. I've always wanted for these dots to work, but I haven't had much luck in Inkscape yet. I wonder how it would look, too. I don't think it would fit the, the vibe, you know? So I'm going to keep it square. And then we have to go into Inkscape and do a bunch of modifications. Then we can import it. Um, okay. I think, yeah, I'm just going to spend this stream. I The usuals aren't here, or at least they're not in the comments. So I'm actually going to spend this stream just doing kind of the, uh, the tedious work. Um, you know, and I hope that's that uh, has some sort of entertainment value, which is like this. So you gotta select the whole thing. You know what? I can't remember all the steps. I'm gonna look for this. Uh, QR code. Yes, okay, okay. So take your example image, open the example, Open, oh, trace bitmaps, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're converting this to a bitmap, then reconverting it into a SVG, which is funny. Okay, uh, open the image, thanks, trace bitmap, click on your image, and look at the bitmap window. I guess I have to download it as a PNG because this isn't a bitmap. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're gonna re-download this as a PNG, which is annoying. And then let's just get rid of the www. I bet we can remove that too. 
Oh, damn it. It has to have the HTTPS. Okay, cool. Um, so that was a PNG. Open with Inkscape. What? Oh, that's so ugly. <laughs> um, why is it? Why does Inkscape do this? Okay. God. Wait, maybe I had it right the first time. Oh, there you go. So the, the trace bitmap works here. Um, I guess we just press apply. Apply the threshold to your liking. That looks pretty good. Um, in fact, let me just scan with my phone to make sure, see if the preview even works. Oh, it totally works. Okay, sweet. Um, Oh yeah, I forgot. I have to open up viewership permissions. Good thing I, I checked because you all probably can't see this right now. And for anybody in the uh, in the comments here, measure twice. <laughs> yeah, uh, measure twice, cut once. Um, get rid of the bottom image. Okay, so apply. I, I think I already pressed that. Oops. Oh my God, Inkscape is so horrible. What the heck? Um, so I'm supposed to have two images. <laughs> Okay, now I have two. This is the bad one. This is the good one. Oh, that looks, that does not look like what the preview showed me. <laughs> Bait and switch. Here, let's see if it works though. As long as it works. Oh, it does work. What did you look at that? Okay, sweet. Um, no, that works great, okay. Let's import that here then. I forgot to save it. And let me close this while I'm at it. Oh, it's so ugly. Zero, zero. Please tell me this worked. Okay, I think it worked. Um, now we can upload assets. I don't know why this takes so much focus. My brain is on like full focus <laughs> to import this SVG uh, project link. I think that's actually the ID. And then let's change this. Oh, the performance just tanked. Yes, let's go. 
Okay, so 0 0.11. Hmm, that looks pretty good. I mean, maybe one, two. Oops. Oops. It, I just don't want it to go over that via, which I know it will. Um, and it's not like, but you can't center it without overlapping the via, which is kind of annoying. Damn, that's scaling. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, this QR code looks so much worse than the previous one. But as long as it works, it works. I mean, here, let's check it. Yeah, it works on my phone still. So. Hmm. Um, anyways. I don't think it looks bad. Yeah, with the with the curves and stuff. It's kind of cool. It's the artifacts of uh, Inkscape's like bitmap tracing. So yeah, kind of cool. And then all we have to do is connect these capacitors. I I think I'm going to go for an 0402. That's another mistake I made was I did an 0603 pad. But here, let's change it to 0402. It's a lot smaller now. Um, yeah, the reason why uh, you want an 0402 here is because the capacitors that we're using in the like 15 picofarad range, those things um, usually come in 0402. Like I got an 0402 50 p 56 picofarad COG capacitor, and those things are like, those are expensive, um, or sorry, those are, that's a really good dielectric material. So I doubt they make them in 0603. It's like, good luck finding them, you know? Um, I'm gonna keep those pretty symmetrical. Eh, it's fine. It looks janky. Eh, it's fine. <laughs> Um, are we done here? I guess I could move this. Sorry, this bothers me. Okay. I want to keep these lines like more even. 300. Okay, here we go. Sweet. Yeah, that looks a lot better, even though it doesn't really make a big difference. Um, and yeah, I was going to change the fonts at it, font size for everything because everything's just absolutely minuscule. Um, can't believe I manually changed the font size for all of this. Let's go back to one. Say 1.2. Oh, that's, that's why it doesn't fit. 0.1. Yeah, it can go over the uh, other silk, which is fine. Um, let's change this to 1.2. That should fit. Oh, no, yeah. 1.2 is a little big. But the thing is, like, the manufacturer... Oh, I wonder if this, like, the manufacturer changed this. If their fonts are just smaller. Because, yeah, their fonts are smaller up, up top. Um, the color of the bottom copper from the top perspective is weird. Unless it's a mid-layer, you're not used to using the toolbar to change the font size. Oh, yeah, I could use Barista. I forgot about that. Thanks for the tip. I can, I'm going to do that. I'll put this asterisk here. Um, what was I going to do? The, the font on this, if I, I put it under the microscope, you should be able to see this in the microscope, is just absolutely tiny. Uh, it, it, even though you're looking at it through a microscope, so 
here. Let's. Yeah, you need like a microscope to be able to see, to see, to read those letters. I mean, I think those are fine. I would just like the fonts, the instruction fonts, to be bigger, which we did uh, change. And yeah, the, the toolbar is really nice. I think uh, Brooks for this, I wasn't sure if I had like a global rule applied. So I had to go click into it to see if I even, if I had um, the font size there, because I think for this one, I might've had like a rule set for it. No, I didn't. <laughs> Never mind. I take that back, but. And I wanted to put more stuff on the back because the back is just so like empty right now. But maybe V2 doesn't have to be like a massive improvement. Um, I think that's another thing. When you do a V2, it doesn't have to completely change everything. You know, I could just put like a manufactured by someone down here, which I was going to do anyways with like PCB way. And um, or Eisler, Eisler or PCB way, we can have them manufacture it. Uh, Rick's saying, look at your trace on the bottom above C15, the color is weird from top perspective. Look at your trace on the bottom above C15. Oh, how like the trace kind of shows up above that. Disable focus. Um, I don't see what's wrong with it. Uh, look at your trace on bottom above C C15. Look at the trace which is above C15, which is non-bottom. Oh, this one? Oh, it's like kind of purple-ish on the bottom layer. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It is kind of weird. It's not like that for these ones. This one's like blue. It's lavender, it should be bright blue. Cool. Can't repo. <laughs> okay, let's refresh the page and this will be, um, the problem will be fixed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, that's really weird. Oh, I was thinking it could be like a sub layout thing, but what's weird is that the rest of everything in here is a sub module. Oh, look, it's fixed. <laughs> that's weird what did I even do to get there um, yay <laughs> yeah I know right yay also uh, let me check out the top copper perfect it's still the same the, you know this reminds me of this reminds me of like the uh, this two tone kind of look it reminds me of um, this bike, I think. Wait, no, not this. Uh, is it 2021? Is it the... I can see... <laughs> Collaborative cursors. Oh, look at that. Like, that reminds me of... Um, this reminds me of that. And also, sadly, it reminds me of, like, the heel bottle. Uh, collaborative cursors are broken for us. I mean, uh, I think Brooks, I saw your cursor. Here, let me refresh my page. Yeah, I, I see your cursor. You're looking at you're looking at the QR code. Now you're looking at, um, you're just scrolling around. This is pretty cool. I think it's a, down the road, I, we could have like live streams where we all, you know that Reddit thing where everyone like puts pixels together to, um, uh, you can see my hover states. Yeah, I can see your hover states. Oh, why is that bad? Well, there's a lot, <laughs> I'm gonna have a, you have to skip lunch to file all these bugs. No I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I can see you hover around. Uh, anyways, I was thinking it'd be so cool if we had 
like the Reddit thing where people put pixels to draw a picture, we have like people just design like a collaborative, like this board that's just do whatever you want in two hours. And then we get it manufactured and see what parts of it work and what parts don't. It'd be even crazier if like we work together towards something. Yeah, let's do it. That could be the next stream. We can like get, and as long as we get enough viewers, uh, to agree to that i don't know if there's any other viewers who want to pitch in and say like yeah that's a cool idea or that's a stupid idea who wants to actually like join in and build a board together um but what brooks why can't i why should i not be able to see your hover state like i feel like i would want to be able to see it right um anyways Oh, it's distracting. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I found it useful once when I had to like help. I was looking at somebody else's design. I was like, oh, do you see what I'm looking at here? And I was like showing them a hover state. And they're like, oh, yeah, I see it. And they changed it, which was, but yeah, there's, I'm sure there was already a big discussion about this. And um, I'll report that bug. Uh, but anyways. I want my my uh, all my PCBs to look that good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in fact, I mean, there's only four more viewers. I think I'm like done. I just think I did all the things I wanted to. So I tuned I tuned it. I made the font larger. I put some stuff on the back. Um, kind of. I think I could do more work with the stuff on the back, and. Yeah. Other than that, oh, there's one more thing, which is there's a hole that I'm using to kind of achieve this. Uh, I, I have a pad in here that I'm using to achieve this like cutoff to the QR code. Um, where is that? Uh, Keep out pad, yes. Okay, so I have the size set to zero. Um, I think it still gets exported um, size minimum. I have to set the size minimum also to zero and then like the size X and size Y to also to zero. Uh, this way, oh, 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 I think I already set the, the whole size to zero. So when it gets exported, I don't get a drill there. But it'd also be nice if I could set the size of the pad completely to zero. Um, and I remember there was like the size X minimum. Oh no. Okay, size minimum. Oh no, no, no. It was the size minimum, size X, size minimum X and Y that needed to be set because they took precedence over uh, size, which is really annoying. I feel like I've never actually used this. So zero, zero. <laughs> oh no, it actually works, but then it also ruins the whole point. Um, let me undo that. Oh, so I can't get rid of the copper. If, if it actually has zero size, then it doesn't do any keep out. So to get this keep out object, I actually need a pad to sit there. Um, okay. I guess I could take the L on that. Um, so these don't do anything because that doesn't do anything. But at least I could do is just set the whole, um, the whole size to zero. I can't type whole size minimum because there, there's another way you can solve this problem. So basically I'm using this pad to get this keep out. The pad actually has um, a hole in it because so the pad actually has a hole in it so that I can connect to the bottom layer as well. Cause if you look at my bottom copper, 
it also um, is like cut off, which I need so that I don't have copper under my antenna. Uh, that makes sense. Um, but uh, the consequence of that is, um, what was I thinking? Oh yeah, the consequence of that is I have this tiny little drill hole in here and the manufacturer doesn't like it. So we can do when you export the Gerber is go into the Gerber, delete the hole and it'll be gone. But another way to do that is what I just did, set the hole size to zero. However, you will always still have like a tiny piece of copper in here. Um, and I guess, I think that was already reported. So let's turn on focus mode, let's take a look. And we have our tuned coil. Something just looks uneven there. But yeah, I mean, 1252, I think I was planning to just end the stream, go order this board. Um, you know what, maybe we could just order it right now because there's nothing else I wanted to do really to it. Is there? Maybe like shrink these vias, they look fine. Um, yeah, I think nothing really changed. I also changed the capacitor size here, but it should still be a 56 picofarad capacitor. Nothing changed there. I just have them manufactured by PCB way on the back now, which I think they'll be very happy to see. <laughs> um, so let's export it. Um, I think part of this is like, I have so many projects going on at a time. I, you just kind of have to forget about this. Or at least that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to forget about this. Um, do the V2 with the small changes I want. And then the V3 could be like a huge overhaul. You know, I don't want to have this project die right here when it's already done. Um, this could kind of be like a V1.5. So, you know, for marketing terms, but let's see, let's just get this ordered. Oh, I forgot the dimensions. Don't close your project until you're done ordering because uh, they will ask you for the dimensions. It's got like 50 of them. That's already way too many, like 25 business cards. Uh, eh, I have a hundred ICs, so I could build 50 of them. Let's just hope it works at all. Uh, and then what's the size of my card? Yeah, this <laughs> 85.6 this is a super weird number. Cause I think, um, it's defined in inches and in fractional inches too. So it's super cursed. Uh, whoever invented fractional inches, I mean, they had no other choice, but they're truly evil. Um, Okay, 50 pieces, two layers, one millimeter, six mil, six mil, 0 0.3, edge connector, hassle lead free. Yeah, make sure you, this is the box I always forget to untick, lead free. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're handing out your business cards and you give everyone lead poisoning. It's kind of a, it's kind of the move. Um, I think I have a stencil. I didn't change anything here. Oh, I did change the, uh, what's it called? I changed the size of the, capacitor so <laughs> have to buy a new stencil um nope 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 uh and then always request to cut the stencil to the board outline this is super nice when the stencil is like the same size as the board outline you could just put a piece of tape on your uh, stencil and then put on your board and it you just paste it and you're done um for $1.5, I can remove the production line. Let's see if you can see this on camera. This code right here. Does it look cool or should I get it removed? Hmm. I wonder if they could put on the bottom layer because I don't care about that. I don't know. It's so small that you can't really notice it. Like, I don't think anybody I've given this to has noticed it. I think it's a cool touch. We can, we can leave it on. Um, and then if we're lucky, maybe they'll change it to an Enig board. I'm actually curious how much it costs to get an Enig board. So it's $50 for 50 boards. It's a lot. Let's see how much 
Is 1.2 cheaper? Nope. Let's see how much uh, 25 boards cost. 37. So I think as long as you get more than like five boards, they're going to charge you quite a bit. Might as well go for 50. Um, and then, dude, now's, the, now's our chance. We could get in matte black. Would, would a matte black board like this look good? I have to know. Um, so this stream might go a bit longer, so I know <laughs> you must. Matte black or white? I don't know. That, that's a true question. I have time, so I can wait for this. I can even order like slow shipping if, if that's what it takes. Uh, yeah, I, I like to use JLC PCB's GURP reviewer, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Manufactured by PCB way. I, I mean, part of me feels like they're the same company, but um, I don't know if they actually compete with each other. From from our perspective, they're like both the gods from China that give grant us with cheap PCBs. Uh, let's get rid of the top. Gotta run. See ya, Brooks. Uh, okay. So this is green. Let's see black. Uh, May the force be with you. Yes, you too, Brooks. I was like, shit, did I miss May 4th? But that was a couple months ago. Um, I will also run very soon. I just need to... Oh, I don't know what color to get. This is the hardest decision of my life. Green, green looks not it. Blue, not it. Red, red is kind of cool. I could see red. I mean, in black, like. It's pretty sleek. Matte black would be pretty sleek, you know? Yellow is just not it for a business card. White is cool, but. I think black is like, it fits, you know, a business card. It just kind of, purple is cool. Okay, let's look at the PCB way colors. This is, this is the hardest part about designing boards. Like, what color should I get? I think, I think we need to get matte black and then do another order in like purple or, I think they have pink. Why don't they have pink? You can have no color. Oh, you have no solder mask. Okay, okay. I'm so confused. Um, you have yellow silk screen. That is really cool. I like that. Yellow silk screen. What would that look like? I gotta. I have to imagine it. Like, ew, just a yellow QR code on black. That that wouldn't be too bad. It would be kind of like gold, like gold on black. You know, maybe. Mm. I mean, ideally, everything would just be an uh, enig. Uh, so it's like actual gold. It's like gold plated for real um, on black. And that would just look so beautiful. And then if the QR code was also like actual Enig. Yeah, I would like that. The problem is you can't have copper QR code inside your uh, NFC coil. But maybe that's like PCV um, business card V3, you know, actual like copper and see if it works. Um, okay. Uh, I, I do want to try one more thing, which is remove the solder mask here so it looks like you can see the traces. It'd be so gorgeous. Maybe. Okay, we'll try it. Um, it's 12. I'm going to hop off, eat lunch. Thanks all for joining me. Uh, yeah. See you guys in the next stream. And then, you know, uh, hit me up in the Slack if you're interested in like a um, collaborative board design stream where we're all just kind of building something. That'd be really fun. So see everyone. Peace.